Hi, let's discuss the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a serous membrane which lines the abdominal pelvic cavity and the viscera contained within the abdominal pelvic cavity. Now, much like other serous membranes, there are two distinct components to the peritoneum. There's the parietal peritoneum, which is lining the walls of the abdominal pelvic cavity, and then the visceral peritoneum, which is surrounding the organs of digestion and other uh, organs within the abdominal pelvic cavity. So that visceral peritoneum is the same thing as the serous layer of the abdominal wall. Now organs may either be intraperitoneal or retroperitoneal. Intraperitoneal organs are seemingly suspended in the peritoneal cavity, but they don't occupy that space. That space is strictly the space between the parietal and visceral peritoneum. But they may be seen or they may be uh, ostensibly observed as hanging within that abdominal pelvic space. Whereas retroperitoneal organs are in the retroperitoneal space, so they are posterior to the body wall. Now, organs which are retroperitoneal are either primary retroperitoneal or secondarily retroperitoneal. Primary retroperitoneal organs are those which develop and exist within the retroperitoneal space, such as the abdominal aorta, the inferior vena cava, uh, kidneys, ureters, suprarenal glands, um, Secondary retroperitoneal um, organs are those which have evolved intraperitoneally and have secondarily moved into the retroperitoneal space, such as the ascending and descending colons, uh, the second, third, and fourth parts of the duodenum. The pancreas would be secondarily retroperitoneal. Now, there are elaborations of the peritoneum that we can observe within the abdominal pelvic cavity. So mesenteries are extensions of the parietal peritoneum reaching out to contact the visceral peritoneum. What's important about these mesenteries is that they represent opportunities for neurovasculature to be conducted from the body wall to the viscera. And these mesenteries may take the form of elaborations of omenta, which are uh, double and sometimes quadruple sheets of mesentery, or we may see uh, ligaments or peritoneal ligaments, which are extensions of the peritoneum which help to anchor organs, sometimes to other organs, sometimes to the body wall. Now, one of the more significant structures of the peritoneum is the greater omentum. The greater omentum is derived from the dorsal mesentery, so this would be the dorsal mesentery connecting the gut tube to the body wall. And the elements of the greater omentum um, attach the greater curvature of the stomach here to different parts of the abdominal wall. So there are three major divisions of the greater omentum. There's the gastrophrenic ligament. The gastrophrenic ligament you can't see here, but it connects that greater curvature up to the diaphragm, hence phrenic part of gastrophrenic. There's also the gastrosplenic ligament, which connects the greater curvature of the stomach to the spleen, which you can see here. And then the largest portion of the greater omentum is known as the gastrocolic ligament, also known as the omental apron, because it hangs from the greater curvature of the stomach down over the abdominal viscera, and then it curves back unto itself up to the transverse colon. So gastrocolic from the greater curvature of the stomach to the transverse colon. And it's a quadruple ligament. These other are just double ligaments. It's a quadruple ligament because you have the membrane going down and then ascending back upon itself. The lesser omentum is derived from the ventral mesentery and it's in association with the lesser curvature of the stomach. And it helps to connect the lesser curvature of the stomach and related portions of the gut tube 
to the liver. There are two major parts to the lesser omentum or constituents. Uh, the first is a membranous sheet known as the hepatogastric ligament, which runs between the liver and the lesser curvature of the stomach. And then there's the hepatoduodenal ligament, which you can see here, which is running between the liver and the duodenum, and that's conducting those three major structures that are ascending to the porta hepatis. So the hepatic artery proper, the common bile duct, and the hepatic portal vein. Thank you.